What inspires me about the Cobra is it was just the underdog, you know, it was just so amazing. Here was a car that was designed and built in England with a little small engine in it. Uh, Carol took one look at this and said, I'm going to go to Ford Motor Company and tell them I've got a car to beat the Corvettes. And that must have been such a challenge for him to come in because he was known, he had raced, he had won Lamar and all that. But, but for Ford Motor Company, it's such a massive company, I didn't know they noticed that a whole lot. And, uh, and eventually he got the permission for the Cobra and put that, the, the Ford V8 engine for the Cobra and put the little 260 in originally that grew to the 289 and on from there. But it was just such an amazing little car that to this day people are still crazy about. When you look at the Cobra, probably hundreds of thousands of replicas have been built. And, and, and that's why that, that really inspired me that if I was going to do something, it had to be the Cobra. It, it was just an American icon and everything that led from winning races in the 60s was from the Cobra. That was the start of it all. And wherever we stop, we stop at a gas station, you'll get, you know, 20, 30 people around the cars. It's camera phones all over the place. Cobra is still the most attractive car. It's just striking, you know, a Ferrari can stop there. People, oh look, oh, there's a Ferrari, there's another Ferrari, there's many of them and there's many new Corvettes. When you see a Cobra, it's always something unique. And even young, you'll see little kids, mommy, 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 pointing at the Cobra, you know, and the older people say, they remember seeing one at the Ford dealer, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And they, 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 it brings back fond memories in everybody. The Cobra has got a unique feeling. Every time I get in, you sit down, you feel, you know you're in something special, you know you're in something unique. It's got a little key, small key, and you turn that up and it fires up this monster of an engine. You feel the Woodrum steering. You know, well, now you're driving something that famous guys drove that's won World Series. It just, it's just such a unique feeling. Clutch your stuff, everything feels real. You feel accelerated, you smell the fumes, you fast smell the gas. It's a unique experience, second to none. You will not get anything like that in any of the modern cars. And, and so many guys, when new people come and we let them take it for a drive for the first time, they come back and they say, man, that scared the hell out of me, but it was so exciting and, and I feel alive. <laughs> say, you know, what makes you want to spend that much money on a Cobra, on something like that? And I say, you know, if you look at a Cobra in somebody's garage, it's absolutely unique. You'll see a new Lexus, a new Ferrari, and, and anybody can do that. Anybody can go out there and get one, and somebody will walk up and say, oh, yeah, that's very really nice. My friend's got one, my neighbor's got one, the other guy down the road's got one, there's one parked in the workshop, but you never see a Cobra. And that's what's so cool. And, it's, and the lines are like no other car. There's not another car you park next to that looks the same, unless you can find something from the 50s, and there's not much of that around. So the Cobra is really unique, and, and, it, and it gives you that special feeling of ownership. And as we always say, it's the ultimate in men's jewelry, in men's art. You know, when you think what people spend on paintings, and yeah, you've got something real that you can drive, and it looks like a work of art. <laughs> We came over from South Africa, I left South Africa approximately 21 years ago now and um, not sure exactly what I was going to do, I had ideas of starting a salvage company because I had a salvage company in South Africa and I uh, heard about the Cobras and, and initially wasn't so keen on it but my wife said, no let's, let's just take a chance with the Cobras, you carry on with the salvage company thing and I'll run the little Cobra shop and we started a little Cobra shop, Bristol Street for the super performance cars. We started getting more and more involved. And when I looked again, I'd opened a branch in Arizona, and uh, the owner of Superformance at the time said, look, I want to just be the manufacturer in the, at the factory in South Africa. I'd like you to take over distribution and for the whole country. In 2004, I bought Superformance, owned it outright, and I've had it ever since, but knew all along that um, you know, we wanted to be licensed by Carol Shelby, we wanted to be approved by Shelby. He was like a god to us, and we respected what he'd done, and we hated the fact that he wasn't getting anything out of what we were doing. And when we first approached him, we had sold 100 odd, 200 Cobras, and he just said, nope, you guys go away not interested and then he went ahead and sued us. We settled the lawsuit with him and by then we'd built nearly a thousand five hundred Cobras because the lawsuit went on for four years uh, and uh, he licensed us as the only company licensed to manufacture 
Superformance Cobras, Shelby Cobra lookalikes. And eventually that grew to me getting licensed to build the CSX Cobra, the original Cobra. And that's what I really wanted all along. And Carol just kept, when he saw we were building the cars better and better, he said, well look, what about the FIA? And then it was the slab side Cobra. And it just carried on. And, and let's do an edition of the, the Daytona. And we came out with a Mark II Daytona, which was a CSX numbered Daytona for the first time in 40 plus years. And now there's a CSX numbered Daytona. And that was the CSX 9000. And this all progressed. We bid more and more to the point where we are now. We do, uh, sh as, as Superformance Trading, as Shelby Legendary Cars, does everything for Shelby for the 60s cars. started coming together, I started thinking, you know what you're doing? You're just this little African out of South Africa, and now you, you, you for one of the icons and, and, and one of the most famous cars from the 60s, the Shelby Cobra, and you've got to do this right. So of course it started been a lot of reading, a lot of listening to. One thing that's wonderful about Southern California, all the old original Shelby employees are in this area. They're all my friends. They're just wonderful guys. These guys all ate, slept, and breathed. Carol Shelby, they knew everything about Carol Shelby. And, um, and, and I learned a lot from these guys. Spent a lot of time with everybody and just seeping in. I am a, you know, I, I've never said I've got a high IQ or anything like that. I was a guy that just barely got a high school education. But I love listening to people and learning from them. And I, that's what I learned. I, 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 now people think I've been involved in Shelby's for 50, 60 years, and I haven't. It's 20 years, but it's been an amazing 20 years. And, and, and I'm very proud. And, and, and thankful that, that, that I got this right with Carol and managed to do it.